Catherine Jurd and welcome to my Biz Blitz video and today I want to talk about when you should focus on your competitor and when you should not focus on your competitor. Now if you've followed me for a while you would know that I'm always saying don't focus on your competitor but there are some exceptions and I wanted to go through those with you today. But firstly I wanted to talk to you about you know um, being focused, too focused on your competitor. I have business owners come to me and they um, say to me, Sharon, you know, can you help me with my business? This is what's happening. And a lot of times I find that they're so focused on what the competitor's doing that they're not focused on their own business and their own clients. And what happens is they see their competitor make a change on a website, for instance, and then they react to that and change something on their website. Or they see a marketing material by that that competitor and then they go and try and outdo them with a better marketing material. If you're in that reactive stage um, of your business where you're looking at the competitor and then reacting, that's a bad place to be. And your business will never be the forefront of your industry if you're always going to follow the competitor. And I'm telling you, they put out a piece of marketing, it may not be great. So why are you trying to then do one better than them? Try and do something different from them. If they're changing their website, change up your marketing in other areas, in social media and so forth. Um, and, and, and stay different from them. So point number one, do not get overly focused on your competitor. Second point I wanted to talk to you today about is you will always have competitors in your marketplace. And I have a lot of business owners say to me, oh, you know, there's no one else like us. There's no one offering this product or service. And that's okay. You may have invented the widget, or, um, whether it be product or service, that is the first in the marketplace. And I agree with you there. But you still have competitors. And I challenge business owners around, okay, no one's making that widget or offering that service, then who else are your competitors? Because sometimes you're competing with things totally left wing of your industry. If you're looking at disposable income for a consumer, say, um, you know, a uh, mum and dad at home, so if you, you know, we're not talking B2B at the moment, but just a consumer in the marketplace, and they've got X amount of dollars left at the end of the week, they're going to divvy that up into what's important. Now, they may take the children to the movies instead of buying your facial product. And so therefore then, the movie theatre is now your competitor in the marketplace. And people challenge me around this, but I go, you look at what your consumer is spending their disposable income on, and you're wanting a piece of that, then they are your competitors if you don't have real competitors in your marketplace. So there's always competitors. Point number two, there's always competitors. Point number three, I want you to know your weaknesses in your business because you need to know, and this is very important, you need to know your own weaknesses before your competitor does because if they do, they will be using that as a benefit to them. They won't bag you, um, professional businesses won't um, you know, bag their competition, but they will use dialogue to let your consumer know that they are better than you. So really dig deep, sit down, whether, whether it's uh, by yourself or with your team or with some mentors or other people you can trust and talk about your weaknesses. It may even be a client. You say, okay, you've had the experience with me and the product or my service, where were my weaknesses? And once you do that, once you can identify those weaknesses, then one, you can fix them and change them and give your um, clients and customers a better experience or if you can't change your weaknesses, then you need to get some dialogue to explain to your customers and clients about that weakness before they hear it from someone else. If you deal with the, um, you know, the objection, some people call it um, in a salesy role, if you deal with that objection with the customer or client, then what happens is they accept that and then they'll accept your product or service and know that as they go through the experience, there will be a weakness around that. So, you know, give it to them up front. Don't try and hide your weaknesses. Show the customer or client what those weaknesses are so your competitor doesn't have anything to use against you in their dialogue when they're talking to the same customers and clients. So my three points today are, um, one, don't be too focused on your competitor um, because you don't want to be reactive. You don't want to be knowing everything they're doing every second of the day. Don't be too focused. Have a look at them occasionally and then come back and really focus on your business. 
Secondly, um, you will always have competitors. Look outside of your industry and um, identify those um, competitors that you have for you. Um, the spending of your consumer. And three, know um, your weaknesses. Is it your experience? Is it your product? Is it your services? Is it the experience? And really work hard on either changing those or letting your customer know that you have those weaknesses. So they're my three points today. And, and um, I, I really appreciate that you spend the time listening to my videos. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to know more about, you know, how to identify your weaknesses, how to identify your ideal customers and making sure that you're talking to the same, the right people, then um, I welcome you to go to my 12-week business academy and we're launching that very, very soon for the next intake. And in the website you go to is www. 12wba.com.au. So go there and I'll tell you all about the program and we can expand around all of the things that I've talked about today. So thank you. If you think that this video is valuable, please share it with your friends, your family and your colleagues. And I hope that I add value to their lives as well. Thanks again. I'm Sharon Jersey.